Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we will be looking at the cell cycle and uh, we will try and identify the sequence of events uh, that are a part of the cell cycle and we will also look at the role of some of the cell cycle regulators. Now the cell cycle is an extremely fundamental process for the normal tissue homeostasis. So the way a cell survives within a body, the way when cells die, the new cells replace the old dead cells is all a function of the cell cycle. Now, it has certain very important and very interesting features. Uh, the cell cycle uh, requires that there is an accurate DNA replication and along with the DNA replication, the cellular components also have to be reconstituted appropriately. So, it has two very important key uh, requirements. Now, this entire process is a very, very beautifully conducted process. It is a very tightly controlled sequence of events which will uh, uh, try and achieve a DNA replication as well as cell division. Uh, now, this beautiful process helps us to create another similar daughter cell. And uh, the entire process is stimulated by a lot of growth factors uh, as well as signals which come from the extracellular matrix uh, compartment. So, it is a very, very tightly regulated process by which both the cellular components as well as the DNA of the cell is going to replicate and will form another new daughter cell. So, let us look at the uh, sequence of events uh, which are a part of this cell cycle. Now, every cell cycle starts uh, with a phase which is known as the G1 phase and this is what is known as the presynthetic phase. This is followed by a phase when DNA is synthesized and is known as the S phase. Then there is a G2 phase which is the pre mitotic phase followed by the mitotic phase which is also known as the M phase. Now, not all cells in our body go on dividing. So, we know of stable cells, we know of labile cells. So, there are some cells which are very quiet. They are known as the quiescent cells. They are not actively replicating and they will replicate only when there is a need for these cells to replicate. For example, if there is an injury to a cell and a new cell has to replace it, then some of these quiescent cells will become active. So, these quiescent cells, these quiet cells are known as the cells which are in the G0 phase. Okay. So, you will have cells which are constantly uh, in the cell cycle and you are, are having cells which are quiet cells always in the G0 phase. So, let us look at this picture which was the uh, movement of these cells within the different phases. So, you have to start with the G1 phase where there is an increase in uh, mass. This is followed by the S phase when there is chromosome duplication. This is next followed by what is known as the pre mitotic phase and then the cell undergoes mitosis and it may then either decide to become a quiescent cell or re-enter the cell cycle. So, these are the different phases of the cell cycle and let us look at it in a little greater detail. So, how do cells enter the cell cycle? So, you could have two types of cells, cells which are quiescent cells 
which in uh, response to some injury may enter the cell cycle that is the G 1 phase or a cell which is uh, constantly dividing. Then after it finishes one mitotic division, it will re enter the G 1 phase. So, that is a two ways in which cells can enter back into the G 1 phase. Now, after uh, uh, this first transit of G 0 to uh, G 1 phase is also known as the uh, gateway to the cell cycle. So, because that is the first point of entry of cells into the cell cycle and uh, it requires uh, activation of lot of transcription factors and uh, that includes a lot of proto-oncogenes and the genes which are required for synthesis of ribosomes, genes which are required for protein translation. So, there is a huge amount or huge number of genes involved whenever a single cell enters the cell cycle and needs to divide. So, it is not a very simple process, it is a coordinated process of multiple different activities which results in development of another new cell. Now, as the cells are in the G 1 phase, they reach one critical point which is also known as the uh, restriction point at the G 1 S transition time. Now, at this point, the particular cell will become irreversibly committed to its DNA undergoing replication. So, after this there is no going back. So, at this point the cell has to enter the cycle and go into the next phase. Now, what does uh, this regulation of this entire process? Now, this process is tightly regulated by what is known as the cyclins. There are certain proteins known as cyclins as well as certain uh, enzymes which are known as the cyclin dependent kinases. So, there is a tight uh, interplay between these uh, cyclins and what is known as the CDKs or the cyclin dependent kinases. Now, these cyclin dependent uh, kinases and cyclin complexes are again regulated by certain inhibitors. Okay. Now, these inhibitors play a very important role in enforcing certain checkpoints within this cell cycle. So, as the cells are uh, attempting to replicate are going through the different phases of the cell cycle, these CDK inhibitors have a very important role to in the uh, cell cycle checkpoints. Now, there are two types of uh, the CDKIs. So, the ones which are very, very uh, broad acting. So, the, they are the broad acting CDKIs. These are P21 they are P27 and P57, while the others which have a much more selective mode of action are uh, P15, P16, P18 and P19. So, these are the two different types of CDKIs which will uh, play their role in the checkpoints of the cell cycle, which means it will check whether the cells which are uh, replicating have the appropriate type of DNA where there is no DNA damage and the cell organelles have been created in the right manner. So, that is why these are this is also known as the surveillance of the cell cycle and its function is to sense any damage which is occurring to the DNA or to the chromosome. So, that is uh, an extremely important uh, aspect otherwise the new cell which is going to be formed will not be normal. So, surveillance of the cell cycle plays a very important point and these are these two very important checkpoints and the checkpoints occur at the G 1 S uh, checkpoint region and the G 2 M checkpoint region. Now, what happens during these two checkpoints? Now, if you look at the G 1 S checkpoint, it looks for the integrity of the DNA before replication. Right. So, just before the replication is going to occur, the G 1 S checkpoint is going to see if the DNA uh, integrity is maintained, while the second checkpoint occurs 
after the DNA uh, replication and this occurs at the G to M checkpoint. So, you have two checkpoints one before replication and the second one which is after replication. Okay. Now, that is uh, what uh, goes on when the cell replication is occurring normally. So, what is it that the body does when it senses that there is DNA damage? So, there must be some cells which do not replicate normally. So, what does a body do at such a point of time? So, it uh, does what is known as a checkpoint activation and this checkpoint activation will delay the cell cycle time and uh, during this delay when the cell cycle time is delayed the certain mechanisms which come into play and it will try to repair the DNA damage. So, that is the first checkpoint activation. The cell cycle is delayed and it triggers uh, repair of the damaged DNA. Now, let us say the DNA damage is too severe, it is too severe to be repaired by the repairing genes. These cells will then have to be eliminated. So, the body cannot allow such cells to replicate. So, the body attempts to remove such cells and there are again two mechanisms by these cells uh, for these cells to be removed from the body and that is by apoptosis or via senescence and cell senescence is a p53 dependent process. So, this is a very very interesting and unique process that occurs regularly within our body. So, there is a lot of checkpoint activation and whenever there is damage to DNA then a body attempts to repair it if it is not able to repair it and uh, the DNA damage is too severe, then either the cells will be removed by apoptosis or they undergo what is known as senescence. Uh, however, there are occasions when these uh, checkpoint defects do not get repaired. So, as you will see in some subsequent uh, topics that you read in neoplasia, you will and you look at the pathogenesis of neoplasms, you will see that sometimes these checkpoint mechanisms do not come into play and when such a thing happens, you will see that the daughter cells are carrying mutations, they are carrying genetic defects which could not be repaired and such uh, damaged DNA can sometimes result in neoplasia. So, Understanding the cell cycle also uh, helps us understand uh, what happens in neoplasia as, as to why cancers develop in patients. So, we looked at uh, the cell cycle today, we looked at the different phases of the cell cycle and just to summarize the different events, we saw that there are two kinds of cells which can enter the cell cycle. The number one cell are the G0 cells, which if you remember are the cells which are the quiescent cells. So, they are not actively replicating, they are quiet cells, but under the effect of certain stimulus, they may get stimulated to enter the cell cycle. So, it is either the G0 cells which enter the cell cycle or you have cells which are constantly undergoing mitotic division, which will enter the G1 phase. Now, in G1 phase there is increase in uh, mass and there is duplication of the centrosomes. We have a checkpoint 1 for DNA damage and uh, this is the first checkpoint for uh, checking the DNA uh, before replication occurs. So, that is the first checkpoint following which the cells go into the S phase where there is chromosomal duplication. From there the cells go into what is known as the G2 phase and following which there is a checkpoint again to see if the replicated chromosomes are normal. So, this is known as the G 2 M checkpoint. So, this is a checkpoint before mitotic division occurs. So, there is a check to see whether the genome is perfectly fine before it undergoes mitotic division and once it undergoes mitosis, it may again 
either convert itself into a quiescent cell or re-enter the cell cycle. So, understanding the cell cycle and understanding how it is regulated plays a very important part in understanding how cancers or neoplasms develop in our body. Uh, also an understanding of the cyclins and their role uh, and the role of uh, cyclin dependent kinases, the inhibitors of cyclin dependent kinases and their uh, function in the integrity of the genome is also very essential in understanding how neoplasms occur within the human body.